If you've been following this channel for a while, OGs will know that the first videos that I ever made were basically physics simulations. Uh, usually I would just do a bunch of simulations in MATLAB, usually related to quantum mechanics, and then set them to music. Uh, and I never gave any explanations. They always ended up being a little cryptic. But anyways, I have a bunch of these simulations saved up right now, uh, and I really don't feel like uploading them individually because it kind of clogs up the timeline. So I figured instead I'd actually give some explanations this time and sort of narrate, narrate them. This one is a little tricky to explain. This is the evolution of a one-dimensional continuous time quantum walk over a parameter space. So every vertical line that you see is the amplitude distribution of one of these quantum walks. And in the x-axis is the parameter space. The parameter in this case is basically how big the steps are. And in these quantum walks, you have absorbing boundaries at either end. And so that leads to something called uh, quantum carpets, which basically gives these uh, distinct peaks at certain times that you might see in this video. The important thing here is that there's a critical parameter. Basically, if the steps of your walk get too big, then those quantum carpets become less coherent. Um, and if the steps are small enough, there's some sort of regularity in their behavior. Basically, it amounts to some eigenvalues crossing in the system. Couldn't tell you exactly what's going on in this one, but I think it's a quantum walk over some sort of non-local graph. I think this one's a Hanoi network. The background behind how exactly this was generated is kind of hard to explain, but generally each color corresponds to a strategy and successful strategies reproduce. These are strategies for a quantum version of prisoner's dilemma. And so either this is coded incorrectly or there are some strategies that were just way overpowering the system. That's why you see purple and magenta in here. This is a simulation of a quantum tracking algorithm that I was playing around with. Uh, usually in quantum search, you're searching for a stationary object, but in this case, this red dot is moving around the state space and I want to do something that amounted to a two-dimensional quantum walk to see how, how the behavior of this time varying oracle affected the system. Ultimately this didn't seem physically realizable and I couldn't come up with any really promising algorithms so I abandoned it but the illustrations were pretty cool nonetheless. <laughs> quantum carpet and in time we're stepping through the parameter space again this parameter is how big the steps are like the last quantum carpet video once you pass this bifurcation you kind of get jump scared with decohering quantum carpets so somehow if the steps are too big you mix before you get absorbed and produce these patterns so the patterns become less organized This is another quantum tracking simulation. I like this one because the object sort of etches a path of probability amplitude through the state, but ultimately the scaling just isn't enough, and trying to measure the state in this way doesn't produce any meaningful track. Another tracking simulation, but this time the object doesn't follow a linear path. Next couple are quantum scattering simulations. So you have some sort of particle freely approaching this box and inside the box you have some sort of mixing going on and you want to see what sorts of patterns come out of the box, how much energy comes out of it. So on the inside you can look at it as kind of like an absorbing quantum walk, but a lot of times people are more interested in scattering properties and what comes out. simulator that I made where I wanted these balls to bounce on a parabola. Clearly the collisions are unphysical, but these are some kind of cool visuals nonetheless. These are bifurcation curves of something called the generalized Bessel function. They're relatively easy to write algebraically, but they make some cool patterns. 
This is a piece of concept art I was going to use for an experimental vlog. Uh, it never went anywhere, but I still think this is kind of cool. It's a quantum walk with the words as absorbing boundaries. This is another piece of concept art based on the Bamani game Poppin' Music, where each button is represented as a quantum walk. These next few videos are pretty interesting. So each figure is a two-dimensional quantum walk that corresponds to a 4x4 unitary matrix, or you can think of it as a two-qubit quantum circuit. So the base figure is the square, and that represents two Hadamard gates acting on each of the qubits. And in these videos, I'm cycling through different circuits by applying different poly gates to each of the qubits. So you get kind of these regular figures that pop up. In the simplest cases, like in this two qubit Hadamard gate, you can describe that analytically as being a square. But in these other cases, there are really complex algebraic curves that bound these quantum walks that I've spent years trying to figure out what they are. Nonetheless, they make for some pretty cool pictures.
though the boundaries of these quantum walks are difficult to describe, you can define a coordinate map that maps phase space into the physical space that the quantum walks live on. In this particular example, there's obviously an error in the code. These things should be self-contained and not flying off the screen. But I saved this one because it looked pretty cool. This is another coordinate mapping of the quantum walk. Again, there's an error in this one, but I'm getting closer. The expressions to plot these are huge, so it's not surprising that I made a couple mistakes in this. These next two are accurate coordinate mappings of the quantum walk. Both the underlying unitary matrix as well as the rotation of the coordinate mapping are being adjusted, so that's why you get these weaving and oscillating patterns. The next video is probably my favorite on this. It looks rather like a lava lamp. In that one, you can really start to pick apart these intricate algebraic curves that make up these quantum walks. tell you what I was trying to do here, but I probably didn't do it right. This one is pretty interesting. Most of the times there's this complex curve in the phase space that maps to the bifurcation curve in the physical quantum walk space. But this simulation shows that in some cases there's almost like a singularity in phase space that depending on how you approach that singularity you resolve some of the bifurcation curves in the physical space. So in this case as you see these curves start to approach two ovals that is the phase space curve passing through the singularity. This is a good one. I figured out a condition to make these quantum walks symmetric, and here I'm just cycling through random symmetric quantum walks.
next couple are pretty interesting. Back when NFTs were hot, I played around with the idea of making quantum walks into an NFT. Not for the money, obviously this stuff is all a scam, but I just thought it was a good fit for all this procedurally generated art that I was making. I wanted each mint to correspond to a different quantum walk and I wanted it to be like an animation that felt like it was breathing and morphing. So that's what these are here. I was working on a lot of other stuff at the time so this kind of fell by the wayside and honestly probably for the best. These next couple are really cool, not necessarily the animations, but the concept behind them. I was working with some people who were interested in looking at phase estimation, quantum phase estimation, and here they're estimating both phase, which is represented on the vertical axis, and noise of the system, which is on the horizontal axis. So the further right you go, the more noise there is in the system. And in naive phase estimation, what you do is you measure your Hamiltonian operator a bunch of times and that gives you some information about the phase and you have to do it a lot to get the correct phase and the convergence is kind of notoriously slow. What these people were looking at were measuring not just the Hamiltonian itself but these things called Grover iterates which kind of change the response curve and give you more information about the phase than you would from just measuring the Hamiltonian itself. So you get these different response curves but the trade-off is that the more Grover iterates you use the more noisy your system gets so you get kind of less information. So in all of these simulations I'm basically using Bayesian estimation to minimize entropy around this probability distribution that eventually converges to this parameter. In some of these you'll see this blue blob and a green blob and those are different probability distributions that are generated by different strategies. Thank you. 
I really like this next group. So for years I was always plotting quantum walks in the physical space, and I had always written bifurcation curves as algebraic systems involving the phase space, but I never thought to plot these systems in the phase space itself. So these are phase space plots and these black curves under the coordinate mapping map to the bifurcation curves on the physical space. These plots are rather psychedelic, but they show just how complicated the algebraic system is. These next couple show the correspondence between phase space and physical space, so you can kind of make out that the red curves in phase space map into the bifurcations of the physical space. For a little bit, I was thinking about converting all of my simulations into cell phone aspect ratio and posting them as TikToks. Turns out that the way that I'm generating these, it's kind of a pain in the ass to move back and forth from computer to iPhone, and I don't pay for video editing software, so I'm not helping myself there. I started out with just some simple periodic animations. Uh, this particular one, some people were pretty upset with me, saying that I was going to kill someone, which as far as I can tell doesn't really happen at all. But I deleted the video, I didn't want to cause anyone unwarranted physical discomfort, especially without warning. These are more of those Bayesian estimations of quantum phase estimation. Not sure why these dots have to be so big, but these particular algorithms don't look like they're performing too well. The previous video is from over a year ago. Uh, these last videos are more recent. I've been looking at block encoding for quantum circuits, which basically means putting an arbitrary matrix into the top left corner 
of a unitary matrix that can be implemented by a quantum circuit. So there are a lot of different ways to do this. No one really has great ways to figure this out. Uh, but usually what you do is you add a bunch of extra qubits, and that gives you more control over the kinds of matrices that you can put in the top left corner. So what I was looking at was kind of a theoretical problem. If you had less than a qubit to add to your system, could you come up with some kind of unitary matrix that encodes an arbitrary matrix into your top left corner? And so that's what you're seeing here. The matrix I'm trying to encode is the sprite for a fable from Pokemon Red. And th this is trivially possible to do if you have a full qubit. So basically, if you double the size of the matrix you're trying to encode. But if you have less basis states than that, it's generally not possible to encode exactly. And you need to make approximations. So I was just testing how, how good or bad those approximations were. You would never do this in real life. I just thought this was an interesting math problem. These last videos smoothly morph the phase space coordinate system into the quantum walk coordinate system. The morphing isn't representative of any physical reality, I just thought the animations looked cool.